What's going on creative family? It's Dustin Valkama and welcome back to another video Dang All right, so today is all about how to fake that gelled lighting look based off of existing light sources in Photoshop If you guys have ever really wondered how to do this It might be a little bit easier than what you think I use this all the time in composites and I think that it's something that'll help you out So I'll see you guys in Photoshop All right, guys, here we are in Photoshop with a composite that I've started working on. And at this point, I've got the background looking the way that I want it to, but then I realized that my model's lighting doesn't quite match the background, and that's primarily just in the color that's going on there. And I think that we can do a little bit better job with this. So how do we fake a gelled light look once we've already shot with existing lights, which in this case were just strip boxes to either side of my model. Well, there's a couple ways that we can do this. So this is primarily based around using blend if and layer masks, but we can go ahead and get started. So the way that I'll start off with this is just by creating, let's say a solid color adjustment layer, and we can just pick that color there for the blend mode, we can head down to color and we can see that this is already adding color uh, to the different tones that we have here in our model. And what we'll need to do is actually create a clipping mask so we can press alt or option and click in between these two layers here. And that will create a clipping mask so that our model is the only, um, only thing being affected by this layer above it. Now with this color fill layer here set in place, what we'll need to do is actually just remove some of that, that color cast in the shadows so that it can primarily take place in these soft boxes that are happening here on the left and right of the image. So what we can do is just double click to bring up our blending options. And inside of these blending options, you'll see this blend F box here. And this is primarily what we'll be working off of. So with this layer, with these options here, this would be working work best if you had say values um, from white to black on this specific layer, but this won't work for us because it's a solid layer. And then the underlying layer is what we'll be using here and letting the values of our model determine where this color adjustment's going to be. So if you bring these shadows up, you can see that that color fill layer is getting removed from the shadows that are on our model. And if I bring the highlights down, you can see that it starts to get removed from the highlights. And so in this case, what we'll do is press the Alt or Option key, and then we can drag one of these handles to break the handles here off of, off of the shadow side and we can just bring that all the way up. And then we can grab the shadow part here towards the end and we can bring that up just a little bit as well. And what this will do, if you look in here on our model, you can see that there's currently a color cast that's going on and that's because we still have a nice range of the shadows being hit. But if we bring this up, you can see that it starts to introduce a little bit more of the natural skin tones there. And so this is something that I play with very delicately. Most of the time I actually just leave it all the way down because I do like to have a little bit of that color cast into the shadows. Now at this point, with knowing that we want primarily just the left and right sides to be getting hit by the, the colored gels, in most cases I would actually let this work the way that it is but there may be times that you'll need to paint this off. And the way that we would do that is just by using this layer mask here. So we can just grab a black brush and we'll say 30% opacity and pen pressure sensitivity can be on. And we'll, we'll just use this here as kind of our mask layer to sort of paint where we do and do not want that rim light effect to be happening. We can maybe bump that up to 60% here just to kind of help this process go a little bit faster. 
but you can see that we're now painting that effect out of certain areas. And for some images, this will work really well. Um, some images it won't. It all really depends on, on the look that you're specifically going for. Um, but in this case, I might actually just leave most of that color cast in because I think that it looks pretty good that way. Bring a little bit back here. So this is it for my process on the color fill adjustment layer here and how I add these gels. Now you can actually go through and mix your colors. So at this point here, the thing that I like about this solid, this solid color adjustment layer is that we can go through here and change the hue, uh, saturation, and really just the value um, of any of these lights. But with the use of our layer mask, it's actually quite easy to also go ahead and change out to having, say, two different colors here. So if we wanted, say, a pink gel on the right side, that'd be quite easy. We can just press Control or Command J to duplicate that layer. We can create that clipping mask by holding Alt or Option and then clicking in between the two layers here. And now that still will mask off of this root. Um, subject layer here down at the bottom and we can change this we'll say to pink to put a nice pink gel there and what we'll do is remove this color with a black brush and we'll just do a hundred percent opacity just to show it here and we will just paint off of this left side of the image And this is exactly how I might go about uh, mixing these various colors here if I really needed to, depending on what are the, whatever the creative vibe is that you're working with there. And then on this side here, we can actually paint right out on the right side, which will bring that full saturated kind of unmixed color uh, there to the right side as well. Now, aside of using the solid color fill adjustment layer, there are other ways that I may go about this depending on the scenario. So we'll just kind of walk through those here a moment so that you guys can understand exactly, you know, how I might go about this process in other ways. So we'll just go down and create a gradient map adjustment layer and say, I'll just create a different gradient here. Click OK and we can Alt or Option, click in between those two layers to create the clipping mask here. And we can just change this to color as well. And we can also go back in, just the same process um, as, you know, using the solid color adjustment layer. Um, but now we're just going to be doing this with a gradient map because it gives us a little bit nicer of a fall off between hues. So we can just press Alt or Option. We can drag that bar there all the way to the right. And now you can see that this is happening and this is a very similar effect to what we actually had last time. Um, just a little bit less saturated. And that's because of the colors here now that are in our gradient map adjustment layer. So in this gradient map, what I typically like to do is Normally I'll just grab two colors. So I'll say have my highlight color that hits the highlights the most. And we can actually turn that to maybe more of a saturated, saturated hue there. And with the shadows here, I'll just go a little bit more based off of what I may feel that the shadows need to be. And so in this case, we'll just say turn them a little bit more blue. And once we bring that down, we can click OK. And then you'll see here that what that did is it just gives us a little bit more of a fall off now from the green rim light to more of a blue undertone there in the shadows. And so this is just something you can play with. Really, every scene's going to be a bit different. And so if you, if you really need more color, um, it's quite easy to get it there but it's really just something for you guys to play around with. Um, like I said, it, usually if I'm just working on a quick comp, I'll just use the solid color adjustment layer 
And then if I have a little bit more time here for the, I'll just use the gradient map. And the other way that I may go about this is just using a normal layer and set that to color. And then I can just use the brush tool. Let's see here, and we can actually just paste this. Let's say paste layer style. And so that just creates the blend if for us there because I copied it from the other layer. And so at this point, we just grab our brush and we'll say a 30% opacity and we can just use that to begin painting in how we want our colors. So a few different ways to get a very similar result. I don't think that there's really a right or a wrong way to, to use them. It really just depends on your scene and what you have time for. You can get really nice clean results either way. So it definitely makes sense. And you can actually double these up as well. So maybe use a gradient map to start off with and then you can follow up with it, say with a layer this way here. Um, this is also where I may continue on if you haven't seen my other tutorial there on how to paint rim lights. Uh, it might be a good idea to check that out, but this is also where I may just take a normal layer and go ahead and paint a little bit more to accentuate, accentuate certain areas here on the model that I may be wanting to get hit with that rim light. So we can do a, quite a dirty job here of this at the moment. But if we just say go through here, we can paint that there's some light there. Maybe raise the value on that. A little bit less saturated. So if we start painting these edges, you can see here that it's really starting to push that rim light look across some of these shadowed areas. So it would be really good to kind of keep this in mind that using both of these workflows um, together can really give you a clean result in the end. All right, guys, so that wraps up this tutorial on how to fake gelled lighting in Photoshop using existing light sources. So make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Click that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as I upload new content. I'm looking forward to ramping up here, guys. We'll get into some more in-depth uh, tutorials throughout the channel. Make sure that you guys leave feedback. If you guys like it, say that you like it. If you don't like it, say that you don't like it. If there are more topics that you guys might want to see, um, you know, I've got a list going that I'm kind of working my way through as I have time. But if there's something that you guys need help with, make sure to just leave that in the comment section. And I'll put my best foot forward to make sure that that gets answered. And um, yeah, guys, I'll see you in the next video. And until then, uh, just remember to create more, say less, and stay creative.